the shorthanded events last year and this year are all tournaments where instead of having nine or ten players at the table, you only have six. So uh, generally, that that leads to a lot more play. You 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 play a lot more hands. You can think about it like this: in in a ten-handed tournament, you're supposed to win ten percent of your hands. If if you see every showdown, you're supposed to win ten percent. In a six-handed event, you're supposed to win what eighteen percent of your hands. So you're supposed to be playing almost double the hands that you would normally play, and you're supposed to be winning almost double the hands. It uh, it creates for a, a lot more action and a lot more situations where you're seeing flops with less than premium hands. Well, in shorthanded play, pretty much any ace is a decent card to start with. Especially, uh, you, you're, you're starting in good position anyway. Um, it's, you, you basically play a shorthanded event as if you were playing a ten-handed event and everyone folded like in the first four spots. And you're, you basically the way I did it, I did a lot of pre-flop raising, a lot of pre-flop re-raising, uh, and a, a, lot of, a lot of small ball poker after that. You should definitely play more aggressive in a short-handed event than you would in a full ring game, in a full tournament. The, the perfect table is a table where people are timid, where they're going to be laying down a lot of hands and they're not going to be getting into conflicts with you post-flop. But uh, every once in a while, you'll run into a table where there is someone who's who's playing as they should, really aggressive. They'll be raising a lot pre-flop. They'll be re-raising you if they have position on you. Uh, against a player like that, you you basically have to have to just put your head down, you know, close your eyes and hope that your hand gets there and his hand doesn't. You have to be willing to take a flop with him if he re-raises you uh, for all of his chips. And you have a, a hand like something like ace-queen or ace-jack. You know, normally, if in, in a, against a normal player, if I raise pre-flop with a hand like ace-jack or ace-ten, and they come over the top of me, it's not a hand that I really want to see a flop with. I'll, I'll muck it, usually. But against an ultra-aggressive player, and I'd put Daniel Negreanu in that category, Against an ultra aggressive player, you have to be willing to you have to be willing to call his re-raises, and you also have to be willing to get some chips in there, even if you miss. You, you know, if you have Ace Jack and the flop comes out nine four two, you you can't just automatically give up on the hand because you didn't hit your pair, because the way poker is, usually if you start with no pair, you're going to miss the flop. You're only going to hit a, a pair thirty three percent of the time, even if you start with a pair. The chances are the pair is going to be low, lower than tens, and you're going to hit an overcard on the flop. You know, you you really get into situations where it's tricky. You ha there's a lot of post-flop play in uh, in short-handed no-limit events. I would play a premium hand exactly as I would play a non-premium, like hand that I was raising with. I would raise the same amount. Uh, I like three times the big blind, uh, and the reason you're raising so much with you know, ace five off suits is so that when you do get your your aces, you can you're, you've kind of disguised the hand a little bit. You're playing it pretty much the same way. It's definitely more important to steal the blinds uh, because they come around more often. Uh, your 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 price per hand goes up quite a bit in a six-handed event.